Happy Earth Day, everyone. Happy 50th Earth Day. It's been 50 years since the first Earth Day, and I'm so glad that we get to be together to celebrate. I figured we we're going to meet one of my favorite animals tonight. And I know, I know, I know I say that a lot, but this one is so special and so unique. And as far as I'm concerned, so adorable that I figured rather than waiting till tomorrow, we're going to do him tonight. And as sort of a special surprise, I also figured that because it just naturally fits into our direction tonight, we are going to do an encore of my favorite story. The Salamander Room. Ah, yeah, I know we read it last night, but what's important to me when it comes to learning and remembering things is to do it more than once. So tonight I invite all of you, if you remember some of the story, to, to say it along with us and we can get to remember some of the wonderful parts and some of the wonderful words and parts of the story. So let's begin with The Salamander Room by Anne Mazur, illustrated by Steve Johnson and Lou Fancher. Maybe we'll read it quicker this time. Brian found a salamander in the woods. It was a dried little orange salamander. And we remember it was actually called a red salamander, an eastern red salamander. There he is. That crawled through the dried leaves of the forest floor. The salamander was warm and cozy in the boy's hand. Come live with me, Brian said. He took the salamander home. Where will he sleep? His mother asked. I will make him a salamander bed to sleep in. I will cover him with leaves that are fresh and green and bring moss that looks like little stars to be a pillow for his head. I will bring crickets to sing him to sleep and bullfrogs to tell him good night stories. And when he wakes, where will he play? I will carpet my room with shiny wet leaves and water them so he can slide around and play. I will bring tree stumps into my room so he can climb up the bark and sun himself on top. Hmm, sunning himself. I wonder if the amphibians are ectothermic too. It's an interesting thought. We should think on that. And I will bring boulders that he can creep over. There's that cool dump truck. What a wonderful tool. He will miss his friends in the forest. I will bring salamander friends for him to play with. They will be hungry. How will you feed them? I will bring insects to live in my room and every day I will catch some and feed the salamanders and I will make little pools of water on top of the boulder so they can drink whenever they are thirsty. Oh, and there's that spotted salamander too, right next to the red salamander. How wonderful. The insects will multiply and soon there'll be bugs and insects everywhere. I will find birds to eat the extra bugs and insects and the bullfrogs will eat them too. Where will the birds and bullfrogs live? I will bring trees for the birds to roost in and make ponds for the frogs. Look at that room. I heard a few say how they would love to live in a room like that too, as would I, as would I. Birds need to fly. We can lift off the ceiling. They will sail out in the sky, but they will come back to my room when it is time for dinner because they will know that the biggest, juiciest insects are there. But the trees, how will they grow? The rain will come through the open roof and the sun too. And the vines will creep up the walls of my room and ferns will grow under my bed. There will be big white mushrooms and moss like little stars growing around the tree stumps that the salamanders climb on. That's lovely. 
And you, where will you sleep? I will sleep on a bed under the stars with the moon shining through the green leaves of the trees. Owls will hoot and crickets will sing. And on the, and the boulder next to me with his head resting on soft moss, the salamander will sleep. goodness and that last beautiful picture of them that wonderful relationship how wonderful to be able to observe animals that's so neat are you ready to observe our animal for tonight now this is a very special one as i said and oh, just like we talked about with the other amphibians this one's going through a bit of a change. Do you remember what word we used when we talked about how they changed? I'll give you a hint. We use these two. Ooh. We use these two to help us remember that word. Remember when they changed? It was called metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. Yeah, so this next guy is also going through metamorphosis, but it's a little different. It's not quite the metamorphosis that we've seen with our frog puppets. Would you like to meet our friend? Let's see, I'm gonna bring him out and then we talked about wet and slimy skin. I'm gonna get his skin wet and slimy because I wanna show you a special part on him. It's gonna show how he's going through changes. So I'm gonna bring this little guy out. I like to call him a water dog, although he's not really a water dog. I just like to think of him that way because when he was a baby, when he was in his larval stage, that's what you call a baby uh, amphibian, a larva, he looked a little bit different than he does now, but he's starting to change. And in the past week or so, he's changed a lot. So I'm gonna get my spray bottle so I can get him even wet and slimier. And I'm gonna show you if I can get him really, it's gonna get really wet up here because I gotta bathe him off because he's, he's a special type of amphibian that likes to live underground. Does anybody know what he is called? I think you can guess. He is a salamander, yeah. And this type of salamander, they also call him mole salamander because he likes to live underground. In fact, when I had to get him out of his habitat, out of his home um, to bring him out here, out of his tank, I had to kind of dig way down to try to find him. Now, it's gonna be really hard to see and I'm gonna really kind of wet him off here, but just a week ago, he had, you can't see him at all on this side because he's completely absorbed him. He had little gills. He still has a little, little flaps, little gills to help him breathe underwater, just like a fish. Now on this side, if I can turn him, he still has his gills a little bit more visible on this side. So let's see if he'll let me show you. I know he's kind of curious. Oh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Let's see can kind of see right I know right around there he's still whoa he still has a little tiny gill but on this side he's almost completely absorbed it let's see I know he just wants to crawl so his gills that used to be there when he was a larva and would live underwater similar to a tadpole are starting to absorb and he's starting to be much more terrestrial. That means much more living on land and under the dirt. So his gills are going away. He's going through a change through metamorphosis. Yeah. So this guy here, this salamander is called an Eastern tiger salamander. Yeah. And you can see it kind of has like almost like tiger stripes. There's another kind of tiger salamander, a Western tiger salamander that has even bigger, brighter stripes like a tiger. But this guy is an Eastern tiger salamander. And he used to be found around here in Pennsylvania, but there's not many of them around here anymore. In fact, they have to be very protected. So salamanders are very important. Remember I said frogs and other amphibians were kind of like superheroes? They kind of were like the bat symbol, showing us if things were going to be safe and okay. Well, salamanders are very much like that. They tell us that things are healthy and safe and you always want to see salamanders. And because just like other amphibians, they breathe and absorb through their skin, yeah, we want to make sure that there's nothing unsafe that might get into their skin. No poisons or toxins or pollution. So if there's none of that and you see a lot of salamanders, that tells you it's a really healthy place. 
it's really well protected. Like a superhero, yeah. Well, he is moving and grooving at this point. He's probably looking to find another good spot to dig down. Now, I'm going to set him down for a second because I want to show you something very, very special that I got in the mail recently as a present to myself. So I'm going to stick him back. And oh, maybe if he's standing still enough, we can see his gill. I don't know if you can see his little gill there. I don't know. He used to have big, fat gills and a big, fat head, and he's starting to lose them all. Maybe I'll show a picture at some point later of when he still had his gills. So I'm going to stick him down for a second and I want to show you something very special. So salamanders, as I said, are very cool and very important and they're one of my favorites. i got to get all the mud off my hand now. And the other day, I bought something very cool to help support salamander conservation. There's a very important salamander that just became our state salamander, Pennsylvania state salamander. And those guys are called hellbenders. Yeah. And so the other day, I treated myself to two cool hellbender pins. Sometimes they call them snot otters. I don't know if you can see that, snot otters. They are the biggest terrestrial salamander in North America. They're really big. They're like over a foot long. They're really, really big. The tiger salamander, he's gonna get pretty big too. He's gonna get about double the size he was. In fact, I'll bring him back out again so you can see him. So he's just a baby now. Like I said, he's just starting to change out of his larval stage and he's going to get bigger. He's going to get about maybe twice this size now. So see, he's on two of my hands. It would almost be like on, on three or four of my hands. But there's an even bigger one, the Hellbender. And they're really cool. They like to live under rocks and fast moving streams. And they're very big. And they're kind of very funny looking. I love them. They're one of my absolute favorites. And they just became our state amphibian. So you, now you know we have an amphibian that's our new state amphibian in Pennsylvania called the Hellbender. Yeah, or the Snot Otter. That's another one of my favorites. So I am going to see if I can hold him while I put my things to help us remember the amphibian song because I don't know about you guys, but as I'm sitting here, I noticed wet, slimy skin that helps him be a salamander and an amphibian. And I don't know if you can see, but he's even got his cute little, see him? Eyes on top. Let me see. I'll set him down right here. Whoa! Eyes on top. And I'm going to hold on to him, so I'm not going to put my skin on, but he does breathe through his skin. Yeah. And I didn't tell you this before, but salamanders and other amphibians can also kind of shed their skin too. In fact, the frogs will eat it. I had a frog eat his shed the other day. Pretty crazy. So he's got eyes on top, wet, slimy skin. He breathes through his skin, and as he loses his gills, he's going through a metamorphosis. So he is, in fact, an amphibian. Yeah. And let's see. We can sing that song to say goodbye about what makes amphibians special. Ready? He's sitting really still, so we'll kind of sing it nice and gently together right in here. Amphibians have eyes on top, eyes on top. Eyes on top, amphibians have eyes on top and wet and slimy skin. Amphibians, they breathe through skin, breathe through skin, breathe through skin. Amphibians, they breathe through skin and go through metamorphosis. Yeah, so that's our tiger salamander my special little bud dog my special little water dog so all right everyone i want to wish you all another happy earth day i hope you've done something wonderful for the earth today and if not we have so many more days to do wonderful things for the earth to help protect our friends like the tiger salamander and other amphibians and animals so happy earth day to all and have a good night good night